Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about medians and altitudes of triangles. So we're going to start with the first term, median. And a median of a triangle is a segment that connects the vertex of the triangle with the midpoint of the opposite side. So what that looks like, if I have a midpoint of a side of a triangle and I connect that midpoint to the vertex that's opposite from that, I get a line that looks like this and that's a median of a triangle. Now every triangle has three medians because we can have three midpoints, we have three vertices. So if we connect those, we end up with three medians. So why that's useful is what comes next, the concurrency of mid medians theorem, um, which is really the definition of what we call the centroid. So uh, the centroid is the point at which all three of the medians meet each other. So as you can see in this diagram, we have a median from the vertex F to the midpoint H. We have a median from the vertex E to the midpoint D G, and a median from the vertex D to the midpoint J. All three of those medians meet at a single point, which I've labeled C, and that's called the centroid. Now what's really cool about the centroid is that it breaks up those medians into exactly two-thirds and one-third of the length. So if we put that into kind of a, a formula for you or an equation, we can say that uh, the length DC is, so the length from the vertex to the median of that median, is going to be two-thirds of the length of the whole thing, DJ. Uh, another way you can think about it is if that's two-thirds, then CJ, CJ is going to be one-third of the entire median DJ. And we can write these equations for all of the medians. We could say that FC, FC is two-thirds of the median FH. And we can keep doing this for all the medians and all those segments. So the centroid is really cool because it breaks that up into two thirds and one third. And you can use that to set up equations and things later. All right, our next term is the altitude, which by the way, otherwise known as the height, if you're working with area or things like that and you need the height of the triangle, that's gonna be your altitude. So an altitude of a triangle is a perpendicular segment from a vertex that's perpendicular to the line containing the opposite side. So if we look, now every triangle has three altitudes as well. So I've shown all three of the same triangle, and I'm going to show you how that has three different altitudes depending on which side is opposite. So if we look at, this is probably the most um, obvious altitude, would be this line here. And you know what? I can draw them in red. All right, so this red line is gonna be the altitude from the top vertex perpendicular to the line containing the opposite side. But I can also draw a line, uh, altitude from the other two vertices. Now these are gonna be a little trickier because if I try to draw, now this is gonna be wrong, but just watch. If I try to draw a line from this vertex to the other side and if I try to stay inside the triangle, I'm never going to end up with a 90 degree angle. So sometimes we're going to have, we're going to have to think outside of our triangle. So here, if I want it to be perpendicular to the line containing the opposite side, my altitude is going to look like this. That's going to give me that 90 degree angle that I want, I just needed to extend that third side so that I could get that 90 degree angle. So um, that's that altitude, so two altitudes so far. Now if I go from, let's see, I've gone from A, I've gone from B, now if I go from C, if I go from the vertex of C, again, I'm going to have to extend the length of that other side so that I can get 90 degrees out of this. And it looks like it's gonna run into my other triangle. Um, sorry about that. All right, so let's look. So we have C, if I want it to be perpendicular, it looks like it's gonna have to go to about there. So that would be the altitude of the same triangle, but going from the other vertex 
to the side um, of the opposite side of our triangle. So each triangle has three vertices, there's or three altitudes. Uh, there's usually one that's a little bit more obvious, more easy to draw, which would have been the first one I drew there. But just know that there are other altitudes in each triangle, and sometimes you have to think outside. Now, um, the point at which all the altitudes meet is called the orthocenter. So the orthocenter um, of a triangle, we have three diagrams here, and the orthocenter is going to look a little different depending on if you have an acute, an obtuse, or a right triangle. So let's look. So if I have an acute triangle and I draw my altitude, so here's one altitude perpendicular. Uh, my next altitude would look something like this. And my last altitude would look something like this. So I drew all of them perpendicular to that third side, that opposite side. My orthocenter is going to be inside the triangle. Now if we do the same thing for our obtuse triangle, I have one altitude here. I have another, now I'm actually going to need to extend this in a second and you'll see why. If I draw my other altitude out here, Remember, if I extend this line, it has to be perpendicular, so it's on the outside of my triangle. Those two altitudes don't meet because I haven't extended my line enough. So if I extend those altitudes, they do meet, but they meet over here like that. Okay, and then if I draw my third altitude to the triangle, oops, looks like I have to keep moving around my word obtuse. All right, so if I extend this side and I draw that third altitude here, it's going to go, oh, and it looks like my drawing's not perfect. So you know what? Ah, yeah, it happens sometimes. Let me try that one more time here. Okay, going for gold. So extending my lines, creating my vertices. Here's one of them perpendicular to that vertical opposite side. I have this one that goes at a 90 degree angle, looks just about like that. And then if I extend this one, I make it perpendicular and extend it. Yay, it worked this time. <laughs> just have to be a little more careful. There's going to be my orthocenter of that triangle. So if it's an obtuse triangle, here's all my 90 degree angles for my altitudes. If it's obtuse, then my orthocenter is going to exist outside of my triangle. So acute is inside and obtuse is outside. Now a right triangle, if we look at this, this is the altitude from this vertex, the top vertex. It is already perpendicular to the opposite side because it's a right triangle. I'm using this 90 degree angle. Similarly, this vertex, if I make the altitude from that vertex, it's also that side of the triangle because it's already perpendicular. The only one I'm missing is the altitude from my uh, corner vertex, that 90 degree angle vertex. If I draw my altitude to the other side there and extend it like so, extend all my altitudes, my orthocenter for a right triangle is going to be on the triangle itself. Um, and and it's actually that vertex of the right angle. So uh, let's look at a couple examples here. We have a few examples. Example number one, find the value of x if AD is a median of ABC. So let's go back to our definitions and just review what a median is really quick. A median goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. All right, so if they're telling me that this is a median, then all I know is that this ends up being the midpoint of that side. Now, if you look again at the, the term median, nowhere in the median does it say that there's a 90 degree angle. So we have to be really careful. This problem is giving us this information on the angle, but we're not going to use it because all I'm given is that it's a median. So I'm going to set up my equation, 5x plus 4 equals 2x plus 12. And then I'm going to find the value of x. So let's see, we have 3x equals uh, 8. So x is 8 over 3. All right, now here, if the AD is an altitude, so now if we look back at what an altitude is, an altitude goes from the vertex and is perpendicular to the other side. It does not go through the midpoint, but we do know that it's perpendicular. So in this case, I know this is a 90 degree angle. 
but I don't know anything about the length of BD or DC. There's nothing telling me that those are going to be equal. So for this problem, all I'm going to do is set 3x minus 10 equal to 90 degrees. So 3x is 100, so x is 100 over 3. So be really careful with your information that you're given. Depending on the information, it's going to tell you how to set up your equations. All right, and the last one here, we're given that triangle STU with centroid Z, so it's a centroid, which, again, if we go back, a centroid is where all of the medians meet. So centroid, you want to think midpoints, midpoints, okay, on the outside. And then it tells us find the length of XU. So we want to find the length of X to U if I know that ZU, so from here to here, is 54 centimeters. Okay, so now this is where that theorem comes in. The centroid, the concurrency of midpoints theorem. If you noticed, we talked about how the centroid breaks those medians up into specific lengths of two-thirds and one-third. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to make my equation. So I know that 54 has to equal 2 thirds of XU because that's what the centroid does for us. Now if I want to solve for XU, I'm going to multiply 54 by the reciprocal, so by 3 over 2. All right, and then half of 54 is, let's see, 27 <laughs> times 3, and that's going to be uh, 60 plus 21 is 81 centimeters. All right, so there are some applications of our theorems that we learned today, and that concludes our lesson. So thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.